by the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. Tonight we present This is My Commandment, a drama based on a teaching from the greatest life ever lived. The town of Magdala by the Sea of Galilee is a watchful town this day. Most of the people hide in their houses. Those brave enough to venture out speak among themselves only in whispers. They look furtively toward the town gate, as though doom itself might be approaching from there. Then, it is heard. the first sound of it. Now, even those who have been brave enough to venture out become fearful. They scatter, each to his own house, and everyone peers out cautiously to watch as a force of Caesar's soldiers in shining armor marches into the town, through its marketplace, and to the door of the house of Saul, elder of the town. the house, isn't it? Yes, sir. We'll see. You'll keep the men on the alert while I go in and have my talk with this town elder. We shall have quick justice in this matter. If I may say a word to the centurion, sir. What is it, Tertius? I've been stationed in this area a long time, sir. I know these people. You won't make any headway being reasonable with them. You've got to be hard, unyielding. I know. I expect that. I mean, they'll deny having anything to do with the whole thing. They might even try to blame it on one of us. They're tricky. I'll know how to handle them, Tertius. You just keep the men on the alert, ready for anything. Yes, sir. All men on attention and on the alert. I'll keep them that way. I'll go in by myself. Are you Saul, the town elder? I am. Would you come in, sir? Yes. If your excellency would care to be seated. I will stand. As you wish, sir. Now then, what I have to say is brief. What I have to ask is even briefer. A centurion of Caesar's army was murdered in this town, stabbed in the back with a short sword. A short sword, eh? A Roman weapon. We've thought of that. There's no significance to it. Now I'll continue. Death was immediate. The murderer was not discovered. We cannot countenance that. This death must be avenged at once. Now, what I want from you is the surrender of this criminal. Well? You talk as though he were concealed in the next room. As though he were mine to hand over. You know who did it. No, sir. You lie. No, sir. See here, man. If you think that by shielding him you can avoid paying for this crime, you're sadly mistaken. We'll match you blood for blood and more. Please, sir, you must understand. I am the elder of this town. The enforcement of the law is in my hands. And I would not countenance murder any more than you would. Regardless of the fact that the victim was a cruel, inhuman officer whose very brutality was enough to ensure him of the fate which finally caught up with him. Uh Uh-huh. Now that you've given me the reason why he was killed, I want the criminal surrendered. You seem so sure the criminal is one of my people. Have you thought he might be one of your own? He's not. Strange you don't know who this murderer is. Even I know. You know? There's a man named Joshua who lives in this town. Joshua? Joshua the silversmith? Why, surely you don't think that he... Why, he's the gentlest, kindest person you've ever seen. All of which would allow him to commit this crime and remain unsuspected. Except for two things. First, he disappeared from this town on the day of the killing and has not returned. Though it's been three days since. That's no crime. The guilty man shows his guilt. The first thing he does is to flee. But you don't understand, sir. Joshua is a silversmith. 
Every so often, he must make a journey to a larger city to replenish his supply of the silver he uses in his work. It's not at all unusual for him to, oh, to be gone for several days at a time. Very convenient, very thorough. No wonder he dared to kill the centurion with such a perfect defense. But there's more to this. The short sword found in the centurion's back was known to have been in the possession of this same Joshua. No. It's very much the truth. So now I want him handed over. Well, in the first place, he's not here, as you know. Then find him. And in the second place, if he were here, I would have to be satisfied in my own mind that he were guilty before he were handed over. I see. I couldn't take it upon myself to condemn an innocent man to death. How, how could I ever face the master if I did? Who said that it would mean death for an innocent man? I know. I know you must punish someone to save your face here. And it will matter little to you if he's guilty or innocent. I will not let you kill an innocent man. I won't let you. So Tertius was right. Well, if strong measures are to be called for, I'm not one to hesitate. Listen to me, old man. Unless Joshua is surrendered to me for this crime by nightfall tomorrow, every man over 20 years of age in this town will be lined up at the town gate. One of every ten men will be chosen and executed. Think about that for a while. Guarding this town, I wouldn't say for sure that you've been entirely unobserved. What is it? About Joshua. Then you've heard. Well, the word spread all over the town. Everyone knows now. I wonder if they know the rest of it, too. The rest of it? Yes. What will happen if I don't turn Joshua over to them? I didn't hear anything about that. One of every ten men will be selected and killed. They, they can't do that. They will. That's why I sent for you. You are Joshua's closest friend. You're an honest, decent man, and you have courage. I want to know, what would you do in my place? One out of every ten men. That would mean almost a hundred men who are sons, husbands, fathers. Almost a hundred of them. Against the life of one man. Go on, Benjamin. Say it. Well, I admit it flashed into my mind. Why not give up the one man to save the other hundred? Yet... Dare I or any of us decide that an innocent man is to die to save us? What would the master's judgment of us be? You're right. We'd be guilty of murder ourselves if we did that. Exactly. So I feel a little firmer now in my decision. For my part, and acting on behalf of this town, I shall give Joshua a chance to escape. We can't give up an innocent man just to save ourselves. But they'll be pressing you for an answer, won't they? Tomorrow at sundown is the limit set by the new centurion. That's why we must work quickly. What do you want me to do? Unless this journey of Joshua's is different from the others he makes, he would be returning to town by tomorrow morning. And if he rides in through that gate, he's as good as dead. You want me to find him before he reaches town? Yes. I want you to leave here on whatever pretext will satisfy the Romans. Then go as quickly as you can to Emmaus. Joshua must pass through there to return home. Intercept him. Tell him to flee anywhere. But he's not to return here. Yes, Saul, I'll do that. You'll have no regrets? If it's the right thing to do, I'll do it. Perhaps once I would have faltered. But I've heard the master too many times to turn away from the right. Now, I shall do what I have to do. Good. Then hurry to Emmaus. <laughs> Tell me, Michael, you must have seen my friend Joshua, the silversmith of Magdalene. He should have arrived here in the mess by now. Uh, Joshua? No, I haven't seen him. And yet I seem to remember someone saying something about him. Who? What did he say? Please, it's a matter of life and death. Uh, let me think. Uh, was it... Uh... Yes, I believe it was Samson the glassmaker. Yes. Oh, then I must find him. There's not a moment to be lost. <laughs> Please, Samson, try to remember. Michael said you mentioned him. You must remember. I? 
mentioned Joshua. But that's impossible. I haven't even seen him this time. As far as I know, he hasn't arrived here in the mess yet. But he must have. If he's gone on, if he's on his way back home to Magdala, it'll mean his death. His death? Why, what are you... uh, No, don't go, Benjamin. Wait. Death? What could he have meant? I'm glad you just returned to me. I just remembered after you left. It wasn't Samson who told me. It was Jeremiah. And Jeremiah said that Joshua had passed through the town without stopping to pay his usual friendly calls because he heard that the master was teaching outside of town. You mean I can find him there? If he hasn't already left there and gone back home. Let's hope that he hasn't. I must find him at the master's camp. Because he's a doomed man. A doomed man. Surely you must remember me. Yes, of course I remember you. Benjamin of Magdala. But what's happened to you, man? You seem anxious and worried. Has some evil overtaken you? No. Something evil can happen unless I find my friend here. Your friend? Would that be Joshua? Yes. Is he here? Have you seen him? Well, of course. He came here almost at daybreak. We shared the morning meal together. And now he's listening as the master teaches. You'll find him over there with the others who listen. Oh, thank you, Peter. I must talk to him at once. But move quietly. And speak softly for the master teacher. Of course, Peter. I would never intrude on his teaching. Joshua. Joshua, I'm glad I found you in time. Why, Benjamin, you here? Yes, I must talk to you at once. It's very important. It may be important, but you can't talk now. Listen, the master speaks again. Now, Benjamin, you seem so upset, so worried. What is it? Joshua, you must not go back to Magdala. Mustn't go back, but why? They're searching for you. The Roman centurion, his force of men. For me? What am I supposed to have done? Remember Caius, the centurion who used to be in command of the area? Well, yes, he was killed. Well, well the new centurion says that you killed him. I? Kill a man? But a man as hard and brutal as Caius, I could never do that. By the master's words alone would stay my hand from such a deed. So Saul tried to tell the new centurion. But he wouldn't believe it. Well, I'll show them I'm an innocent man. I'll go back and prove I didn't do it. Prove it? Uh, how will you prove it? Well, I'll, I'll tell them that I wasn't anywhere near the place where Caius was attacked. They must believe that it's the truth. That isn't much proof, Joshua. It's only your word. And you know how easily they'll brush that aside. So you see, you must never return. Magdala. My home, and suddenly it's the one place in the world I can't go. I'm not a criminal, not a fugitive. I don't know about running away, about hiding. I I just don't understand. Wait, Benjamin. I feel sure that if I called 
tell nothing them. Will, nothing will help. They don't seek justice. They're determined only to kill someone as revenge for this. And they've fixed on you. I see. Well, go. Go on, leave at once. Oh, wait, Benjamin. You said they were more intent on revenge than on justice, didn't you? Well, suppose I run away. Suppose I'm never seen in this land again. Tell me, what will stop them from seizing another man? Well, in, in that case, Joshua, it won't be one man. It'll be many. Many? What are you saying? It's a reprisal because of Saul's unwillingness to hand you over. Centurion has threatened that one out of every ten men in the town will be killed. They'd kill a hundred men? But please, there's no time to talk. You must be on your way. No, wait. Benjamin, I have something to say. You can have nothing to say. Saul won't hand over an innocent man to be killed, no matter what the cost. And do you think that I could go through my life bearing the guilt for the blood of other men? Please, Joshua, the time draws close. It'll be dusk soon. I must go back. I must face the Romans together with all the others, and I'll go back with you. You know what that means, Joshua. I know. I won't pretend to be a brave man. I, I'm afraid, yes. But this is something bigger than being brave or not. Only a little while ago, I stood before the master and heard him teach. I looked upon his face, which is full of strength and love. And I believed him as I heard him say, This is my commandment, that ye love one another. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Those things I heard him... I believe them only a little while ago. But think of what waits for And what waits for a hundred men if I don't return? Can I let them face death for my sake? No, I'd rather give my life, even as the master said, to save those men who would die in my place. Come, Benjamin, we're going back together. I only hope we get there in time. <laughs> Yes, sir. Every man of the town over the age of 20. All here. Good. Give the word for them to form a line. Then I'll begin counting off. Every tenth man will be taken from the line and put under guard at once. Aye, sir. Then either they tell us where this man Joshua is, or else we'll kill them. Now line them up. Aye, sir. All right, you men, quiet. And we'll form a single line here along the town wall. Move, quickly. Murder! That man who called out sees him. Aye, sir. He'll be the one chosen for the first ten. Aye, sir. Now the rest of you move. At once. That's better. There's your line, sir. Good. Now we'll pick them. First, let me see. Ah, yes. Saul, the town elder. We'll see how stubborn he'll be now. You. Yes, sir. You'll be the one selected from this group of ten. Yes, sir. How do you feel now? Not so brave and defiant as you were before. No, sir. Just thankful. Thankful? Yes, that it is I instead of one of the younger men. Where do you wish me to stand? Stand right there. Yes, sir. Now for the others. Go. 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 Have them be quiet, Tertius. What's the meaning of this? Sir. Well, what is it, Tertius? What's the matter with you? The two men who approached the town gate. Well, what about them? One of them is Joshua. Joshua, the man we seek. Well, go. Seize him at once. Yes, sir. Two men. You and you. Come with me. Draw your sword. We'll take that man prisoner. Bring him to my headquarters at once. Aye, right, sir. Well, so it seems we have him after all, doesn't it? Yes. I can't understand it. You can't, eh? No. You see, the other man, Benjamin, was sent to warn him. Indeed. Well, first we'll deal with Joshua, then with Benjamin and yourself for this little intrigue to thwart Roman justice. You'll come with me to my headquarters at once. The rest of you men will return to your homes peacefully, else there'll be bloodshed here yet. One is Joshua, eh? Yes, sir. A very clever criminal. Well, you'll get your punishment now. 
Sir, may I speak? I don't want it said there's been no justice here. You may speak. Sir, I know what's going to happen to me. I have no illusions about that. But I do want to say that I'm an innocent man. You ran away the day the centurion was killed? No, sir, I went away, as I have done many times before. Quite innocently and quite in accord with the usual demands of my craft. I went to buy silver, without which I cannot work. If you wish to examine the bag I had slung over my shoulder, you will find the silver in there. Clever, but not clever enough. I say you ran away. I see. The truth has no place here. The truth, eh? You want the truth, do you? Well, I have something to show you. Hershus, fetch the weapon for me. Sorry, it would do no good. The man will deny anything to save his life. Fetch it. There's no choice now. The whole town's aroused over this. Reports of it will find their way to the capital. We must prove our action was justified. Fetch it. Aye, sir. You'll find out soon enough, Joshua, that you'd have been better off telling the truth instead of endangering the lives of all those men. He didn't endanger our lives. Be quiet, Saul. I'll deal with you and Benjamin later. Because we warned Joshua? Is that why? By your own admission, remember that. Yes, sir. And would you take that into account now? What do you mean? I will take my punishment. Benjamin will take his. Because we tried to warn Joshua, tried to tell him to flee. But in the face of that, he came back. Is that the action of a guilty man? Questions of guilt or innocence are decided by me. Hershus! Hershus, where is that weapon? Here, sir. It had been mislaid. Ah, put it down on the table here. Aye, sir. There, Joshua. Look at that weapon and tell me that it wasn't in your possession. Yes, I had that weapon once. Joshua, Joshua please. Don't admit anything just to save us. It's the truth. I did have this weapon. There. You see, Saul? Sir, may I ask, why do you question me about this weapon? Why? <laughs> did you hear that? Why? Are you still going to carry on that pretense of innocence? This is it. The weapon found driven into the body of the dead centurion. This very short sword that you admit having possessed. That? That sword was yours? Yes. So you suspected me. Now I'm beginning to understand. Sir, look at it. A Roman short sword. Would one of us have dared to own such a weapon? No, for merely to possess such a weapon would be danger, even death. But you said you did have this weapon. You admitted it. It was brought to me by one of your soldiers. Here, look at it. See the fine silver work on the handle. I did that. That's my work. That's why I had the weapon. And having had it, you decided to use it on Caius, the former centurion. But here. I didn't. I didn't. Two days before he was killed, I gave this weapon back to the man who brought it to me to have me do this work. That's a lie, sir. Well, Tertius, what do you know about this? Well, I... I... He lies, that's all. Tertius, you know. Didn't you come to my shop? Didn't I give this weapon back to you two days before Caius was killed? Can you lie about such a thing? Why, well, the very coins you paid me are in my house now. I can get them. I can prove this. Money bears no mark of ownership. Tertius, you seem to be evading the man's charges. Why? I have nothing to evade. The man lies, and someone must fling the lie in his teeth. It's true there's lying going on here, but I'm not so sure now as to who's guilty. Surely you don't believe them. Tertius, you never told me before that this weapon once belonged to you, did you? It, it wasn't important. Wasn't it? And why did you make sure to tell me it was last in Joshua's possession? You yourself accused him, led me to suspect him. Now I hear the weapon was returned to you before Caius was killed. Is that true? You tried to deceive me, make a fool of me? Hey, please! You're, you're joking me! I want the truth, Tertius, the truth! All right, only let me go. Let me free you. Now, talk. It's... It's true. True. The weapon is mine. I... I did get it back two days before Caius was killed. Then you. Caius was a cruel man. Too hard with the men who served under him. We were beaten for the slightest infraction of rules. Some were even killed. I myself sent reports back to Rome saying those men died in the line of duty. It wasn't true. I couldn't bear it any longer. I had to put an end to it. And to him. So you threw suspicion on an innocent man. It... It seemed so easy. Joshua, he'd had the sword. I, I made sure to tell that to many of the men. 
Then, on the day I got the sword back from him, we talked. I knew he was leaving town. That would throw suspicion on him even more strongly. I even figured out they'd try to warn him. And he'd never dare come back and face death. That would prove his guilt. No one would suspect me. They did warn him. But somehow, for some strange reason, he did come back. Yes. And if he hadn't done it, innocent men would have been killed. I was determined to punish someone. Now it shall be you, Tertius. I... I don't care. Not anymore. Saul, Joshua, you men may leave now. From this moment forward, military justice will avenge this death. Joshua, look about you. This is once more a peaceful town. No longer do the people cower nor hide fearfully in their homes. There's laughter now, not the sounds of mourning as there would have been. You were brave, my friend. No, Saul, not brave. Just believing and confident in the master's words. If I had run away, I might have saved my life. But I would have been untrue to the master's word undeserving of his teaching. I only offered my life for my friends, as he said. You remember, Benjamin? Yes. And as it turned out, you were the only one who could have known what really happened. The only one who could prove that our people had nothing to do with this crime. Yes, Benjamin. Many lives have been spared. Good men will live on because of the master's words, which are strong words. And true words for all men to remember. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life. For his friend. Commandment, another episode in the greatest story ever told from the greatest life ever lived.